Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a real privilege to be with you and just to come and share the Word of God, which I uh, feel that this morning God wants to do something special in our lives. And, you know, at the prayer meeting this morning, something else that also came through was, um, I think it was Danny um, came and he started with a word that, that he feels that God wants to, it's like a light switch, God wants to switch on the light. And uh, right throughout the prayer meeting, uh, a lot was, a lot of praise were towards light that was coming on. And I really just feel that for us this morning, God wants to come and just switch on some lights, bring some fresh understanding of what the Word is really all about. And uh, so the thought is just to, just to spend time around this one little aspect. It's about the church, which as we look at that, when we look at church, um, it's referred to in the Word of God as the bride, the, the bride of Jesus Christ. Um, and it's with this church that as we look at it, um, it is the bride and it's in its finest hour. Um, it might not feel like this. When we look at church today, in many ways people think, amen, you know, there's so much wrong in the church. But it's not quite like that. God is moving. There are things happening. And um, that we, we just give thanks to God for. And um, just a word of encouragement when we talk about the bride of Christ. Um, in Jeremiah chapter 24, and we just read two words of, verse of encouragement there. And then we, we, we'll flip over to 29. And um, it's a well-known verse of scripture. But in 24 verse, verse 6 it says, My eyes will watch over them for their good. And I will bring them back to this land. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them a heart to know me and I, that I am the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God. For they will return with me with all their heart. This is God just encouraging us. This is really what it's all about. And then this other scripture which I... You know, we've, you've heard it many times, but I feel that it's good for us just to be reminded of this. In 29 from verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek for me with all your heart. I will be found by you. Declare the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declare the Lord. So, what a word of encouragement, you know, but just for us to understand, as we look at the word of God, um, that we in a, we, the church is in its finest, the, the, the greatest season ever, and um, you will notice that we've got what we call two testaments, an old covenant and a new covenant. And if we understand it right, between the two covenants, between the two testaments, there was what they call, it was, it was the, like the darkest time in history. There was 400 years of silence between those two covenants. 400 years, nothing happened. It was all just quiet. And we remember that with the old covenant... They were under the law. They had certain ways in which they could go about to get into God's presence. And so that, that's what happened. In 400 years, nothing happened. And here comes a man by the name called John the Baptist, or John the Baptizer. He wasn't a Baptist like the Baptist church that we know today. He was John the Baptizer. And John the Baptist came. And imagine just being there 400 years there's nothing happening. Here comes a man, John the Baptist, and he, and he started to preach a message totally different to what the people were used to. They would have said, hey, what a heretic. What is this guy trying to do? But he came with a message. He was the voice preparing for the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. And people were gripped by, by this. And here's John. And it was just incredible how that we came into the new covenant, the new testament, and what happened since then, how Jesus came, 
Now, we come and bring it to us here today. A couple of years ago, uh, I was on my way to, to, to Sudan, and I flew up to Kenya, to Nairobi, and from there we were going to, I was going to charter a little plane to get me up further up north. And while I was in Nairobi, the, um, I bought a Bible, and this specific translation was a, um, it was a little bit different from the others, but the author of this, uh, he had translated this, and he had a little inscription on top of the book of Acts, and I felt the Holy Spirit wanted me, while I was in the plane, to start to read that. And I read this little thing that he spoke, you know, these thoughts on the book of Acts. He said, in fact, the last chapter of the book of Acts has not been written. It's, the book of Acts doesn't stop where we know in, in 28. There's, there's more. And as I, wrote, as I read this, in my heart I was stirred. I said, God, if this is what it's all about, then surely... The book of Acts is not going to end in defeat. The church is not going to end in a low. It must, if we read the story in the book of Acts and we, and we say, God, we are part of this new breed, of this bride that you are coming for, then surely there's going to be a lot of things that, need to, that we need to understand correctly. And I pray that today, that God will just come in such a way and he will just put the light switch on for us to understand this is what it's all about. And often what happens is, and I know that there's a lot of you, I don't even know you. And you've come from different walks of life and you've got different interpretations of this. I'm just, I just say to you that whatever I'm, is coming through here, if it's not in, on the Word of God, you've got every reason to reject it. But if it's in the Word of God, you've got every reason to actually just zip your mouth. And just, just keep quiet because the word of God must speak to us. And when we come with our old ideas and ways, then uh, it, it becomes a problem. So in Malachi 4 verse 1, it says, Surely the days are coming, and we are living in days like this. And this is what we call the hinge of human history. Years ago, people were talking, they said, from the 1950s, Onward, and they said to 2025, it, I think it's going to be a little bit longer. But they say from 1950 up, um, it's been uh, most of the things in human history that we can understand. There's so much that has happened in the last number of years. If we think back of where we've come from, the world we've come from, we understand there are major, major things that's busy happening. But how do we prepare as we as we say, we are part of this hinge of history. We are part of what we call a new breed of people. How are we going to actually get into this? Um, and to start with that, I'd like to just make a statement. God does the deepest work in the darkest hour. It's when we look around us and we say, things cannot get worse. Lift up your head, open your eyes and understand that God is busy working. He's doing things which we've never seen before, before. We need to see the storm through the eyes of Jesus, what Jesus is busy doing today. And that will help us to understand. And as we look at the early church, at the day of Pentecost, here there was such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It was just overwhelming. The church just grew with thousands at, in a matter of a short little while. And then as we read a little bit on, in, into Acts, here comes persecution. The darkest hour, they were scattered all over. It was such a disappointing time for some of those who were not in touch with what God was doing. The darkest hour, but God was doing the deepest work. Churches went up all throughout the then known world. The God was moving there. And uh, so this, this will help us to understand a little bit better that today where we are, God is a God of purpose. God has got a plan for us, and God wants us to understand that if we've got a vision for us, the reason why we are here, and uh, we understand as we, as we see this season, how we actually going to grow and become more, reach more maturity, that is what the church is all about. Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans of, man, of man's heart, 
but the Lord's purpose that will prevail. We've got lots of plans, but God is saying, my purposes will prevail. My plans, my purpose will stand. That is, that is what God is saying in his word. Despite of what you can see today, God is working. So if we, say, if we look at it like this, what is Jesus doing in this finest hour? If we want to call it the finest hour, the last hour of our lives. Um, give you a little, little story here. And that might help you too, just, just to break the ice a little bit. In Judges, here's the people also. It's the darkest hour. And during this time, God raised up a man by the name called Samson. And he grew up, and Samson, he was... Uh, he, was just, he wasn't a, just an, an ordinary child. He grew up, but he was also a little bit naughty. And so what happened, the Philistines were after him. They wanted to kill him. And um, the people of Israel realized that this guy, this boy is becoming a problem. And so they took him, they bound him, they led him up to the Philistines, and um, they, they were going to execute him. And the next thing is the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God came on him and he broke the, the, the rope like nothing. And um, as he looked, he saw a jawbone of a donkey. And uh, this donkey um, never realized that through his life, he was just a, a, a normal old donkey. But he didn't realize that at his death, he was going to get into his finest hour. Because that day... Samson grabbed the jawbone of the donkey and the word of God tells us that he killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. Now, for you, you old donkeys, <laughs> you might sit here today and say, you know, I feel like this is who I am. What can God do through me? How can God do that? If we can allow the Holy Spirit to just come and do a work to open our eyes then we'll understand that we are people of destiny. We are people of purpose. God has got a plan and a purpose for every one of us. So what is Jesus doing at this point of time? And it's not what we are doing. If we want to be successful, understand, we can all link up with that, what Jesus is doing. So in Jeremiah 1 verse 1, here comes God and he spoke to Jeremiah and he said to him, Jeremiah, what do you see? And Jeremiah replied like this. You see, I see an almond tree. And God looked at him and said, Jeremiah, you've seen correctly. So for us this morning, I pray that God will just come and say, when he asks us the question, what do you see? What, what do you think are my plans for this country, for the reason why you are here? So what is Jesus doing? Um, a couple of things that I, I believe that, that will be important for us to understand that, first of all, he is reclaiming his church, the bride. He's bringing the bride back to prepare her for his return. So Jesus is preparing the bride for his return. The second thing is he's is resetting the church. Um, it's like a watch. If, the watch, if, you, if you've got a watch and it operates with a battery, sometimes the battery goes off and you need to re replace the battery. It's, you need to reset the church, the, 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 uh, your watch. But in the same way, God wants to come and wants to reset us, just to bring us back into, so that we can be on the same page as where he is. It's like, you know, with the, the disciples on the Emmaus Road in, um, in Luke 24, they, they didn't even realize Jesus was there. They were on their way and they were walking. Jesus pretended he was going to go straight. And uh, it says that the hour was well spent. The hour was past. And for us, the hour is well spent. And God is saying, I need to reset. I need to come and bring some adjustment so that we can understand as believers the reason why we are here. He's also re we, are also, we also need to be refocusing. God wants to come and show us that there's a new way, not our old way and perception, new things that God wants to do. He's also re-envisioning us. He wants to bring fresh vision, fresh understanding. Thirdly, God is busy changing the wineskin to accommodate the new wine. If we come still, and we think that we are going to still do it in our old way of thinking, an old wineskin, we will not 
be able to handle the new wine of the Holy Spirit that's coming. We need to be able, we need to say, God, help me, my heart to be open, understand the season that we're in. And fourthly, we cannot be caught up with our old methods, but we need to be caught up with a mission. Our old way of, you know, this is what the church is all about. You know, within the church, we've got certain ways and certain perceptions of church, and we, we think that the church is all about me. What is in it for me? You know, we can, if you're not happy with the church, you quickly just jump over and join another church. And so our whole lives we can spend running around, not understanding what, what is God's plan and God's purpose for our lives. We are not attenders. There are lots of, Jesus had lots of followers, but not many disciples. We are not here just attending church, just to tick the box, just for what is in it for me, but we need to be people who are on a mission. God is calling us, He's calling the church to understand we are here, we're on mission. There's work that needs to be done. And, um, and it's with this, when we are looking at God wants to refocus us, He wants us to have a new understanding of what this is all about. In Psalm 119, verse 89, it says, Your word, O Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heaven. The word of God is eternal. It is solid. It's there. What God is saying in his word, this is it. So if we're going to refocus, understand what this is all about, God wants to bring and come and say, I want to do something in your togetherness. Understand this, a couple of things here. God wants to bring us back to his word. The word of God. What is God saying in his word? Not what you've heard from tradition, not what you've heard from people if it's not according to the word of God. God wants to bring us back to his word. And secondly, God wants us to, as we come to his word, this word must become a mirror. As we look at this word, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit wants to come and speak to us through his word. The word is a mirror and we can change according to the word of God. Thirdly, refocusing on the master of revelation, that God wants to come and for us to have an understanding of the master of revelation of who God is. That is when we say we need to refocus, have a, have a new vision, new understanding of Jesus who, who paid the ultimate price. And then fourthly, the cross without Jesus is just a tree. Religion without reality. For many people, for many of us as believers, in South Africa many years ago, we've referred to it, South Africa as a Christian nation. In Sudan, when I first got there, they called themselves Christians. It was, we had the North and the South. And the South was called Christians. But yet, when I arrived there, a hundred years before I arrived there, there was another man by name, I mentioned this, called Archibald. And he came there in with the gospel. But a hundred years later, they were worshipping a white bull. That was the way that they were still going back to the old covenant, worshipping a bull. And, but they were Christians. And here to, uh, for us today, we also we say that we are a Christian nation. But you know what? Just in word. But God is saying, no, no, it cannot just be in word. The cross without Jesus is just a religion. It's not a reality. Jesus, we need to understand what this is all about. And then number five, nothing must take the place of Jesus. If we call ourselves Christians, then we under that. We are obligated. We need to live a life that is, that is worthy of its calling. And then the, the, the next little point there, we've been made in the image of Jesus, not Jesus made in your image. Jesus is not going to change so that for you, you need to change and become like Jesus. That is what this is all about. Now, if we look at the season that we're in, how are we actually going to get into the season that we're in? Don't look at the past. You know, so often, when you look, listen to the lives of people, all that they can talk about is what happened to them in the past. Look at what God is doing now. Open our eyes to see what God is doing now. now. And then secondly, don't look at the present See the storm through the lens of Jesus. And then thirdly, don't be opinionated. Don't be someone with, who's so full of your own ideas. Sometimes we can become very opinionated. And just for the Afrikaans people here this morning, 
In Afrikaans, when we talk about opinionated, have your own ideas. Moe nie dogmatisch word nie, bemoe syk wees nie, of eiewees. Jy nou, is makkelijk. Ons is eiewezig. Niemand kan my niks vertel van, van hier af nie. Wie is jy om met my te kom praat so? Ons word eiewezig. Ons ken het een manier, dis my manier. Don't, don't become someone who are opinionated. Your opinion means nothing if it's not in line with the word of God. Understand that. And now, fourthly, don't be impatient. Don't pursue the wrong thing. You know, you can come to the end of your life and you've been, been running and pursuing the wrong thing only to stand before God one day to say, and God will say to you, what have you done what I have entrusted to you? So what are the things that God wants us to do? We look at God's plan, God's purpose for our life. We look at the God who can provide for us, the God who can fulfill the promises that he has for us, like what I read here in Jeremiah I've got plans for you, good plans for you, to prosper you, to bless you. And then we build on the future. Now, just here, as we as we coming towards a close here, how can we remain on the hinge of history? How can we do this? How are we going to run with this, uh, what God has entrusted to us? I'd like to show you what, what a model church looked like here in 1 Thessalonians. This is, this is the church in Thessalonica. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 from verse 4, and we read this. It's Paul writing, and he, he, he could say this about them. He said, um, For we know, brothers, loved by God, that He have chosen you because our gospel came to you, not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, in spite of severe suffering, and welcomed the message with joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model. The model, you became imitators to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell us how you've turned to God from idols and serve the living and the true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom the, he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescued us from the coming wrath. You know, what a testimony about this church. They, they were idol worshippers. And then this gospel gripped their heart. And it was from that church that the message went through the then known world. They became they, they became imitators of Jesus. Now, if we're going to understand what God has called us in this hour that we live in, five little things I'd like to share with you. Five, yeah, five thoughts here. And first of all, as believers, we are committed to God's purpose. As if you say that you're a child of God, then we are committed to God's purposes. And if we are committed to God's purposes, then we need to come in light of that, even this morning, and we need to remove all obstacles. In, in some ways, anything that is going to stop you, that will hinder you from going forward. Got a little thing there. I said, no sacred cows. You know, things that you are busy with doing, and it's a sacred cow. This is my thing. This is who I am. No one knows about this. God is saying, if you want to be part of my plan and my purpose, no sacred cows. You need to deal with that. Get rid of it. Don't allow that in your life. The second thing is, know the absolutes. We cannot negotiate with God. You cannot come and try to like put a carrot before God and say, Lord, I will do this if you do this for me. We cannot negotiate with God. It's, it's an absolute. This word that we see here, I've got the final say. This is what we need to return to. What God is saying in his word. And then thirdly, know what God has called me to. I need to understand what God called me to do. And if I understand what God called me to do, as believers this morning, things do not work out always the way that you want things to work out. Things do go wrong. We do get hurt. There are difficult times. 
We are facing this. But as believers, we understand this one thing. My life, my hand is in his hands. I'm, I'm his child. I, he belonged to me. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And then fourthly, every day is my dwelling place. And it's with that that we can understand. I can be intimate with God. I can have an intimate relationship with Jesus every day in spite of the darkest hour that you go through. I can be intimate with God. He can speak to me. He's right there. If, you, if you've got a problem, run to Jesus. So that's my fourth point. The last little point here. We need to be fruitful in every area of our lives. God wants us to be fruitful. When you talk about We as believers, we are committed to what God is doing. This is the priesthood of all believers. And yet, the hard reality, the sad thing is, how many of us are actually involved as a family in this family, but we are running out, doing our own thing? You might be very cross with me this morning. I, I'm also, you know, when I'm at home, I'm also going to the farm, and I'm there, and I know on a Tuesday... It's, it is, it's an uncomfortable day. It's hard for me. And then we've got an elders meeting at 4 o'clock. And uh, to, to rush back home to get myself clean up because I look like... Uh, really, it's, not, not, it's frightening. I get back home, clean myself, and come and sit at an elders meeting and then into a prayer meeting. And I thought to myself, what is wrong with us as believers? When I look at a prayer meeting telling you if, if there's revival down here, we might. I think we might have had 20 people that would come to a prayer meeting. If I look at the prayer meeting out there, it's also the same. What is wrong with us? Yeah, we've got all our excuses. We've, we've got all reasons why we can't attend it. But this is just one little aspect, one little thing. If we, if we say to ourselves, we are, we are part of this body, surely then we need to be more involved in this. If we, you want to look at the strength of the church, see who's coming to the prayer meeting. See who's involved in the things of the church. And it's hard, but we need to, you need to hear it. And then the last little thing is, we need to be fruitful in every area of our life. Take every opportunity. Every opportunity that God gives us. See the hand of God in everything. As we go through all of this, see the hand of God in this. And then lastly, we build away from ourselves. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. And that is the message I, I felt in my heart for you, that God wants to come and do a deep work in every one of us. God bless you. Thanks. Okay, I'll get you to come pray for us now. <clears throat> I like it when Henny preaches. No nonsense. That's what one day when we stand before our king, that's what it's gonna that's what we're gonna account for. I want us to respond to these points that he brought up. I think if you if you caught what he's carrying that actually God always works. The tough times come to the people of God. But within that, God is beginning to stir something. And I think we can all feel that. that God is beginning to stir something. Uh, and it's a dissatisfaction with how things look. The world that we live in. Um, because of the statement that Henny made is actually God is called the church to rise and rise and rise into greater and greater glory. But then we look around and we're dissatisfied because we have a vision of, of what we expect in God, but actually we're not there yet. And that causes something in us to be stirred. And so I hope that as, maybe just as a show of hands, if you were stirred to something greater, just put your hand up. I want, I want you to see that faith that me. I want you to see, sorry, just put your hands up again. Just look around. 
I want you to see that faith comes when we hear the word of God. Thanks, you can put your hand down. And so uh, I want to just go through these points. And I want you, as I go through them, the stuff that Rahini's already said, but I want to just activate what, what I feel God is saying. Uh, uh, be imitators, sorry, um, being committed to the purpose of God. So right now, just do an audit. God has purposes. He has an eternal purpose that he started. If you understand, if you love God's word, you understand. when I say the purpose of God, you'll immediately have a picture of what that looks like. How committed are you to that? And if you don't understand what the purposes of God are, then get into God's word. How committed are you, we, to the purposes of God? Number two, knowing the absolutes. What are your absolutes? What are the things that you say are the big rocks in your life that nothing else will deter you from doing? For our eldership team, one of those things is our prayer. That for us is a big rock. We, we, we won't allow things to bump that out of our life. What are, you, what are, the, big, what are the, the big rocks in your life? What are the absolutes in your life? That actually convenience won't shake you from doing. Allow God to settle some of these things in your heart. God is stirring and raising up another generation of people who are going to declare and be everything that God wants. And we either go, we either see or we get left behind. We can't do it in our own strength. We just get we just drift along with society, but when, uh, when, a, when a people see something different, then s- that's the beginning of another generation. Know what God has called me to, or you to. What has God called you to? That has implications. If God has called you, for example, to be part of the worship teams, what are you doing about it? If you're already part of the worship teams, if that's part of your calling, how, how are you skilling, training, training yourself in that? If God has called you to that, what has God called you to? Every day, He is my dwelling place. Is that a reality? God, you being with God every day. And every day He's with you, walking, you're feeling His presence, you're growing in and hearing His voice. And then being fruitful in every area of our life. How's your fruitfulness? Husbands, wives, parents, children, your, your workplace, your work environment. How's your fruitfulness? Let's stand. I want to close, but I'm going to ask Henny to come and pray for us. I'm trusting that as the word has been preached, we've already seen it. More than half of the people raise their hands because God is starting to put something on. And that's not something that man does. That's something that the Holy Spirit does. Now's the opportunity to say, yes, God. And, and like Henny said earlier on, we make the adjustments. We adjust. It's time to reset, refocus, readjust things so that we can step into what God has for us. Please pray for us. Father, we, we are overwhelmed by you. We're overwhelmed by what you're doing. Father, we are standing before you. I'd like to say, oh God, that you have captivated our lives, our hearts. Father, and it, this fire that you want to start in every one of us is going to be one that will produce fruit, a harvest. Father, we stand before you, and we do not want to go down in history as people who have been disobedient to you. I pray, oh God, that this generation will see a move of the Holy Spirit like they've never seen in their lives. Father, we pray that even this day, for this area that we're in, the regions, the people that we we can impact, oh God, that from here we see a revival fire that will start. Father, we see your fire. We say, oh God, just come and breathe on us afresh. Come, Holy Spirit, and take control. Father, remove that which is not from you.
Father, even if there's repentance needed, we repent of that, we lay it down. We say, Jesus, it is you, the pearl of great price. We stand before you. We are so aware of your presence. We are so aware of what you're doing. We say, come Lord Jesus, move us on. Father, we love you, we worship you, and we exalt your name. Amen.